from Paramount Pictures in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. God damn it's good. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Appreciate your patronage. By the way, I should tell you, That we are now nine days away, nine days away from our big lister party in San Diego with our friends from 1037 Free FM. That's right. It's going to be next Friday, June 15th at Cane's on Mission Beach. Doors open about 2 o'clock or whenever we're done with the sound check. 3 to 7 is the time the show will be on the air live, and uh, you'll be able to come down and see it and see all the stuff that goes on as the show goes on. It's 21 and over, so you know what kind of show it's going to be. And that's right, I'm coming down for Father's Day because uh, I am the dad you never had, and so um, I'm going to visit some of the sons that I never had. In San Diego. Some of the daughters I never had, too. We'll see how they're developing. Get a good look. That's right. Blister parties are crazy. We did Canes last year, and there was a line, not only a line throughout the program. When we left, there was a line to get in. <laughs> People were still waiting in line to get in. We recommend you get there as early as you can. Uh, we've had such a great time every time we've come to San Diego. And uh, being out on the beach is great. Be sure you dress for the beach, by the way. I'm going to remind everybody right now that Canes is right on Mission Beach. And uh, it's really not an air-conditioned place. All the windows and doors are open and uh, the breezes come in and what have you. But you really want to dress appropriately for the beach. So if you can, I recommend you, uh, you know, change it up a little bit. Shorts, swim trunks, whatever. Bikinis, bikinis are fine. Thongs, definitely. Dress for the beach, everybody. Come on. It's next Friday, June 15th at Canes on Mission Beach. Now, if you need details, you can go to blowmeuptom.com and get the details. That's blowmeuptom.com. And I should tell you that, uh, ladies, if you are a Southern California 9 or 10, and you would like to uh, not have to wait in line, you'd like to be guaranteed admission, You'd like to get in the back door and hobnob with the members of the staff and management of the Tom Likas show. You sent us a photograph. By the way, I got some pretty good photographs already. They're already starting to pour in because uh, San Diego, we always get a great response. We always get a great response. So uh, if you are a 9 or a 10 and you, uh, you're not going to come with your boyfriend or your husband or your fiancé or your gay friend or any other male friends or your fat and fugly friends. If it's you, the hot chick, send that photo to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com right now while you're thinking about it. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Send it in. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Gary Zabransky has been charged with the responsibility of going through all these photographs and deciding... Who is hot enough to get in the back door? Those who are will. We make this really simple. So, again, your photograph, if you are a 9 or a 10, send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. One person, I don't know if she had any idea, one person wrote it from Scottsdale. Scottsdale, Arizona, that's right, and she sent her photos. Um, Honey, you uh, certainly fit the bill as a 9 or a 10, but uh, I hope you've got a plane ticket. I hope you're planning on flying or driving into San Diego from uh, Scottsdale. 
Because the show is not in Scottsdale, it's in San Diego. But we'll be more than likely to uh, uh, contact you and uh, certainly uh, offer you the opportunity to come. But I find it hard to believe you would actually come from Scottsdale to San Diego. If you would, would love to see you. So send those photos into Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com, and we'll be looking at them. And then Gary's going to pick, and we'll have a list, and uh, you will get in that back door. And God only knows what will happen, because Gary and I will have a limo. We always have a big limo when we come to San Diego. And it'll be Friday night, and the night will be young. So anything can happen. And it probably will. Thank you very much for being a part of the program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, I don't really know what the question is here. I'm going to talk about something that's been happening in my life recently, and uh, we'll see if uh, I come up with a question. But it is something I've been thinking about, and uh, you know, rather than just sitting here and brooding about it or thinking about it or churning over it, I'll tell it to you, and then we'll uh, we'll see if there's a question in there. Um, without being specific about who the person was, because there's a lot of litigation out there, and I'm a big target, somebody I used to be involved with, I have finally just, not I, I not only gave her the boot some time ago, but um, I am now not going to be in contact with her, not going to talk to her. To, and, and by the way, it's not, uh, if she called, it's not that I wouldn't take the call, but I'm not going to make any phone calls. Not going to be sending any emails. And I hinted earlier on the program, I'm not going to be doing any big favors that uh, she might need done at some point in time. One of which I think she needs done next week. I won't be doing it. I'm not going to do it. This is the, yeah, this is the same person that we had the argument about the VoIP phone. Yeah. Remember that show I did where he talked about the VoIP phone? Uh, the, the latest chapter in that saga is, I've had it. I have had it. And so uh, there is no need to continue the charade of having a friendship. And this is what I always talk about, you know. Oh, can we be friends? Well, I don't understand the point. What is the point? What is the point of remaining friends? I mean... I don't, I don't see her as an enemy. I don't uh, hold a grudge. I'm not walking around, you know, like Dean J. DeBilio. I'm not walking around here all churned up inside and spitting blood. I mean, it's not like that. Sitting here plotting revenge, I'm not like that. I'm at the happiest point in my life I've ever been. But it's another example of how there really is no point, I think, sometimes in... In, in staying friends with people once the relationship doesn't work out. Because many times that person has unrealistic expectations of some kind. If it's a guy, sometimes they intend to keep having sex with you even after the relationship is over. And if it's a chick, sometimes she expects some of those chick services that uh, chicks get from guys, you know, whether it be coming over and killing a spider or being there on the night when there's an earthquake to comfort her or lend or give her money or lend or give her things or come over and do things around her house for her. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not interested in doing that. You know, I've got other interests now. I've got other concerns. And frankly, I've turned my attention to uh, more fertile ground, if you know what I mean. I don't want to be having to explain to other women why this woman keeps calling me. You ever have to get go through that? You ever have another woman's uh, stuff like in your bathroom? I, I, uh, by the way, I've had this. Chick leaves all of her lotions and conditioners and conveniently forgets to take them when she leaves. So your bathroom is full of chick stuff. And then every time a chick comes over, your first thought is, maybe she'll use that, like, girly shampoo and conditioner that's sitting in the, the shower. Use that up, thinking that's a good thing. And so she comes to you, the chick you're seeing today, and she says, what's this? Whose shampoo is this? They start getting upset. What is the point? What do you need that for? Do I really need to be getting text messages from this person, phone calls? Mail? Do I really need to be having lunch with her and seeing her? What is the point of all that? 
Now, it's one thing if you've got to stay a friend with benefits. And uh, for me, I, the friend with benefits thing never works with anybody from the past. It only works if they're a friend with, with benefits in the present. But if, if they were a former relationship, ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, I can't do it. I know others who can. I can't. I can't do it. I can't go back in time. Now, in the particular case I'm talking about, I tried to be civil. I tried to be a good person. You know, I tried to understand that the other person didn't want to leave, and it was hard, and she had to move to a new place, and she wasn't comfortable with that. And I you know she needed to uh, buy pots and pans and plates, and she needed to figure out how to do a how to start a checking account, and all these other things she'd never done before. And I tried to be understanding of all that, but as I always say on the Tom Like It Show, no good deed goes unpunished, as in the episode with the VoIP phone where. We each had a phone under a particular account, and we couldn't split the account separately, so I asked her to disconnect her phone and start a new account under her own name, and she said no. <laughs> okay. It kind of started with that. No, it started with all kinds of things, but the bottom line is, look, uh, I wish her the best. I wish everybody from the past the best. I'm not angry. I don't hold grudges. And I'm not going to sit here at night staying up till four in the morning saying, what can I do to make her life miserable? Absolutely not. But I also don't see the benefit to me of remaining friends with somebody who has been, uh, you know, difficult at best throughout this breakup. It's like, what's the point? It's amazing. I've been living alone for a long time, but there's some of these issues still remain. It's silly. So I'm done. I'm out. I'm done. I'm done making phone calls. We're not going to be having lunch together or dinner together. We're not going to be keeping up any pretense of being friends because there's really not much of a friendship going on here. And I might add that every time I would see her, she wanted something. She wanted money. <laughs> Could I give or lend her money? Could I help her with something? It was never about being friends and just having a conversation. It was always she needed something. And so I'm uh, out of it, done. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done doing that. I'm, I've moved on to other stuff. And any of the people who want to continue to be my friend who knew the two of us can do that. And anybody who wants to choose sides and they want to stay on her side and be hang out with her, that's fine too. I really don't care. And the reality is right now in my life, I'm so happy. And I'm enjoying myself so much. I can't let this stuff get in the way. I can't. But I, I, I just don't understand it. Is, is there really any benefit to staying friends with people from the past? I, I guess that's my question. Is there a benefit to that? I mean, I, again, I guess some of you guys are continuing to have sex with your ex-girlfriends and ex-wives and stuff. Uh, but, but really, when it gets right down to it, Always having to answer the phone, and then there's always a question, or always, can you help me with something, or can you do something? It's like, you know what? I've got friends today I'm helping out. People I actually spend time with. People who uh, uh, I actually enjoy my time with. Why would I do that? So I guess my question for you is, you know, do you think I'm missing the boat here? Maybe you think I should uh, stay friends with everybody I've ever had sex with or everybody I've ever been married to or everybody I've ever lived with. Is it necessary to do that? Especially if you have no kids. We don't have kids. I don't pay alimony. I don't pay child support. There's no children. There's no visitation. I mean, in view of all that, is there any reason to remain friends? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM Tom Likas I love your show Your show is what turns me on midday The Tom Likas Show Like a show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. All right, the X is now the X. What do you do with them? 
Marissa, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, I'm 22. I have my last ex. I know I shouldn't even have an ex, but uh, I haven't spoken with him in a couple years. He keeps sending me messages on MySpace saying how his life is meaningless now and how he wants to get a cup of coffee and catch up. And I know how transparent it is. He just wants sex, but... I mean, is it really, like, that's just pathetic to me how an ex has to, like, keep coming back for sex. I mean, can he, like, find someone new, or I don't know. Well, it's much easier to uh, go back to uh, ground you've already plowed. It's stupid. I mean, like, by the time I break up with a guy, I'm already over him. So Why? I, mean, I don't want any contact with him. I don't want to see him. And so you decided you decided to break up with him, right? Yes, yes. And what was your reason? Uh, you wanted to get engaged, <laughs> and I didn't. Good, 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 good I work. I was stupid. So, I mean, my parents, they got married when they were young. My mom was 20. Um, I know it was a different time in the 70s, um, but I'm just so against that. My family's Croatian, and they believe that, like, all girls should get married and have, like, 14 kids. So I just, from, from the beginning, I've always been opposed to marriage and having kids, but just being around that just made me want to, like, you know, stay away from it even more, and especially now that he, he's just... He won't leave me alone, basically. And I, I've just been deleting the messages. I don't know if, like, I should tell him to stop, or do you think that Well, you do know thing? that uh, I don't know which uh, cell phone company you're with, but um, I know that my cell phone company allows me to go to their website and put in phone numbers and block the instant messages, specifically of, of particular people. I should probably do that, yeah. But it's also on MySpace, too. I don't know. I guess I could block his MySpace. But I don't, I don't know if, like, I mean... Telling him to stop would probably be a bad idea, like any contact. Because then he's getting a reaction. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, all my friends have been saying, don't even bother, like, just delete it, which I've been doing. No, don't even but, delete it. Block him. Yeah, I should. Like, then I you won't know. be debating this stuff with yourself. True. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'll just get a bunch of messages from people that I've seen in the past, dated, whatever. There is and... somebody listening right now, and she knows who she is, who I blocked. Oh, yeah? She can't send me any more uh, text <laughs> messages. <laughs> She I just can't think it's do sad. It. I mean, if if you break up with someone, that's to me that's saying I don't want to have any contact with you. I don't want to be friends with you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to think about you. I certainly don't want to get a cup of coffee and catch up with you. Uh, that I think it's dumb. Like if for anyone else out there, if your ex is bugging you, stop. Like I've actually had to call uh, the police on one of my exes before. He showed up at my house. Well, oh, there about you know, you know now now I'm going to say what my therapist would say to me. Okay, now we're seeing a pattern. Okay, what are you doing to keep it running into guys like this? Oh, I, I I haven't seriously dated a guy in a while. Like the the guy I had to call. Doesn't on, matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't know, I mean, after I break up with a guy, I, I cease all contact. No, I mean, but, no, but, but, but ceasing all contact, it, it is not enough to stop calling them. You have to block them out. Hmm. You have to never, ever respond to anything they do or I say. Haven't. I haven't. You have and to not let their emails get through, not let their text messages get through. Mm-hmm. You have to do it. Yeah. And the minute, because especially guys who want to get laid, you know, they'll take anything as a hopeful sign. That's true. So if you really need what you say, then you need to block them in every way you can. Mm-hmm. And rule number one, never let them in your house. No, no, I didn't. That's why I called the police on that one guy. I mean, that was all way, that was way back in high school. He was like 17 and just completely out of his mind. But um, Yeah, but, lately, but, it, but guess what? The guy who was out of his mind was pretty appealing to you at one point. <laughs> that was before I knew any better. Like, I learned pretty quickly not to go with guys like that. But, I mean, the other messages that I've got from other guys has basically been like, how are you doing? What's up? It's not been anything like scary or threatening. It's just more annoying than anything else. I understand. But, well, Marissa, thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Matt. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Happy, I should say. Yes. Hey, I've, I've got a story for you regarding exes. And, uh, you know, I, I was a, a psych major in school, a completely worthless degree, but I'm, I'm a professional salesman now. And, and mind games are what I do. And uh, mind games and relationships uh, you know, you, you just do it kind of out of fun in the beginning, but uh, a relationship for me was always kind of about control. And, you know, your therapist would probably say a whole lot about that, but uh, when I would date a girl, I'd, I'd kind of put her through, through different tests. And 
one of the early ones I, I would always put a girl through would be uh, to see how close she is with her exes. And I started dating this girl, and she was friends with all of her exes. And uh, I, I, I basically gave her an ultimatum in the beginning saying, it's them or me. You know, she picked me. We kept dating. I didn't like her friends. I basically pulled the same thing on her, and she, uh, she got rid of all her friends, pulled it on her again, and uh, uh, she started becoming friends with my friends and uh, the people that I wanted to become friends with. And it basically got to the point where uh, I'd tell her to jump, and she'd ask how high and when you want dinner when I get back down. And uh, it, it's just kind of funny what women, insecure women, will really put themselves through to be with a guy. Yeah, um, that's true. But but you see, uh, giving a woman an ultimatum like that only drives them underground. Women who are fascinated with talking to their exes, they don't give up talking to their exes. They chat when you're out of the house, when you're out of the room, or they send text messages back and forth. They talk on their cell phone when you're not around. Trust me yeah. when I tell you. Whoever is, you, whoever you true. gave the ultimatum to is doing it anyway, and you've got yourself convinced that you've stopped her from doing it. In some cases, that's true, I agree. But when you physically threaten the ex and he doesn't talk to her anymore and you make sure of it, then that's another story. And but, it still doesn't guarantee anything. You're, you're right, you're right. And, you know, that that just kind of shows them your your major flaw and how they can get to you, which... You know, was one of the reasons the relationship ended. And but that's uh, my, you, you know, see, the point is, bad. If you made your own rules for yourself, anyone who's that fascinated with the ex, you would not get involved with. <laughs> and listening to you, that is exactly what I learned. You know, you don't give people ultimatums. You just say, "Look, you do what you want. I'm out." Yeah. Yeah, you do need to. Uh, it, it, it become. You need to be a more strong person. And uh, that that was just a learning experience, and it was a while ago, and you know, I've learned a great deal since then and haven't repeated the same mistake again. Good luck, so Matt. I, I guess I should say thank you. I guess you should. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Crystal on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Fantastic. Well, my opinion on all of this, I really think that it depends upon their relationship. I have three major exes, and I choose to talk to one of them who was when I was really young, and we kind of dated because we got along really well and realized we were just friends. Like, we never even slept together the whole time we dated because it was kind of had that icky feeling. Like, we were really young, so we just realized, you know, it was kind of like we liked each other so much as friends that we thought we should date, and that wasn't it at all. So we stay in contact. But it's it's completely friendship. But I have another ex who calls me constantly, and I broke up with him, and he calls me. Basically, I feel like some exes call you and want to have, like, a friendship in case they messed up kind of thing. You know what I mean? No. Like, like imagine if, like, a lady broke up with you, and she's like, you know, but I want to stay friends with you because, like, in the back of her mind, she's not sure if she really should have broken up with you, so maybe keeping that friendship with you keeps almost like an open window, like a cracked door, in case eventually she realizes she can't live without you and that she does want to be with you and maybe she can push herself back in instead of completely, like, losing all contact with you means that she won't ever talk to you again. And if yeah. she messes up, she has to realize it herself. So I think there's a lot of ex relationships that really have to be like analogized at like the point of it. I don't think that they're all bad, but I definitely think that an ex is an ex for a reason. Analyzed? Analyzed? <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> Sorry, I sometimes I stutter. But ah. um, no, they have to be analyzed. Is what I meant to say. Got mm -hmm. it. So I don't know. I don't think that every ex relationship is a bad thing at all. I just don't see the purpose of it. I think, well, with, like, my first one, we're actually friends. Like, we get along really well. Like, we go out and do things. We go to the river together. We go out to bars together. We do, like, fun stuff. He has a fiancé and a kid and stuff. So we're actually friends. Like, our friendship was really a genuine friendship. But, like, my other ex, he can call and talk as long as he wants, but that'll never happen. It's just, I guess, I entertain the idea just because I don't want to be a total bitch kind of thing. So Why waste your time? Oh, no, I don't waste my time. I would you, just like, you just said you entertain it. You right? just entertain it. When you say you're just entertaining it, it means there's nothing in it for you. You're just kind of uh, giving him uh, the time to sit and blab to you. Uh, why waste that time? I don't know. I feel bad. I don't want to be a total. I, I've worked very hard on not being a mean 
There's it's nothing mean about it. There's nothing mean about it. You're wasting your time. I just, I don't know. I feel like I, I, I don't want to hurt his feelings by being like, listen, sorry, dude, I don't have time for you. Like, I would feel totally guilty by doing it. And I'm pretty sure he's probably listening to this. So if he knows, he'll probably get the idea. But um, No, and, and by the way, that's that's what my family always does. Well, I'm not going to tell him this, but hopefully he'll hear about it and he'll get the <laughs> idea. I don't hope he'll hear about it. When we broke up, I... Why don't you just him tell him? Why don't you just tell him? You know what? I, really, I'm wasting my time with you. I don't know why we have these conversations. What's the point of this? Move on with your life. He's definitely moved on. Trust me. He moved out of state, so he moved on. I'm not going to like move well, for him or do anything. Moving like on with your life has nothing to do with a moving van, okay? Moving on with your life is something that happens inside your head. Very true. And that's a big part of why I didn't, you know, I broke up with him. He was a loser. He doesn't have much to offer. And so I guess I kind of feel guilty knowing he's not going to get somebody else anyways. Nobody wants a guy without a job and a car and has, isn't going anywhere. So oh, you did. I feel bad. Oh, I did at the time, thinking he had the motivation. And very shortly after that, I broke up with him. No, you shortly. thought that you were going to give him the motivation, that your magic vagina was going to uh, motivate him. That's what you thought. I know. I totally did. But, you know, my magic vagina has brought me a lot of other things in life. So I guess I thought it could bring me that and that it did not. So. Well, there's nothing magic about a vagina. There's a lot more where that, <laughs> there's a lot more where that one came from, if you know what I mean. Tom Likas. Come on. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Being a man, having an orgasm is like taking a whiz. And for women, I think having a kid is like taking a dump. Okay, now let's just face facts. This is basic human desire, need, feelings, biology, all that. The Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Erica, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, um, is there any reason to stay friends? That's my problem I'm having. Because, well, we just had a child together. Why'd you do that? Well, you know, <laughs> I knew you're gonna ask that. Um, you know, I don't know, but no, we what do you mean? You know? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. I, we, you know, I got pregnant and I decided to keep it. I had an abortion when I was 17, made the same mistake at 20, and, you know, decided to keep the baby. Oh, what? what you ever heard of birth control? Yes. You have? What do you think of it? I think that everyone should use it. Now, but except you. But, no, I think I should, too. Well, why didn't you use it? Because I was being stupid. You were stupid twice. Yeah, I know. That's the worst part. And then you compounded it by going ahead with the pregnancy the second time you were stupid. Right. Which was stupid, too. Yes, I know. How's and that? now I have another person involved, because I have the father of the baby, who, uh, well, three months before the baby was born, he started using drugs and I had to kick him out and get an order of protection and now he wants to be back in our lives and you know his whole family one day want to take me to court and you know want to be friends and all of this and I just don't want to have to deal with that well, why do you even have these conversations with him I don't I turn my phone off my my phone I can't get incoming calls and I do not talk to him so how do you know what he wants this was all before I turned my phone off because that's what he had told me. But how can he tell you if you're not talking to him? Well, now I don't know what he wants. He, I don't even know where he is. All right. But do you think that just because there's a child that I need to be friends with him? Uh, not unless he, uh, you know, is going to make some legal stink about it. No. Okay. Well, that's what he's trying to do, and now his whole family wants to help him just because the baby's involved. Well, people do that. Do you have an attorney? Yes, I do. Good. Yeah, you better talk it over with your attorney. All right. So, it's just that's it then. But I still have feelings for him. <laughs> yeah, now you're being a moron. 
CN, that's what I knew you would say, that's what I didn't say. You're being a moron. You're a moron. <laughs> so just let it go. He's a drug. He is a drug addict. Yeah. Drug addict. So he, unless he goes to court, just don't even talk to him? I wouldn't. I would do whatever my attorney says, and that's all. That's all. Nice. But stop with the feelings. You you were now you know you're 20 years old, which we haven't discussed, but we are now seeing clearly your immaturity level. Yes. I mean, you are too. Well, how am I immature? In what way? What are you in love with this? First of all, you got pregnant twice. Twice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you had a baby. Right. With a guy who was clearly a loser. Yeah. And now he comes back and you claim he's bothering you, but now you say you still have feelings for him. You're a well, little, I do. You're a little I girl. You me. are a little girl. You are not an adult and you are not mature enough uh, to be doing half the things you're doing. Well, that's why I'm back in my parents' house. That's where you belong. I know. There's no place in your life and now your baby's life for a drug addict. Right. Do you understand? Yeah. You will be a you will be a loser the rest of your life. You will be living in that trailer with your parents uh, uh, until you're old and gray. Unless. Unless you start turning your life around. Well, I'm doing pretty good. He's just no. Problem. You're not. I, mean, I well, I am. I have really? a good job. What college are you going to? I was going to ASU. And what? No, what college are you going to? Mm, I'm not going to one right now. The answer now. is none. And you won't go to one either. Well, I want to. Yeah, well, I want Santa Claus to come down the chimney on December 24th. Yeah. You want to. Who cares what you want? What are you going to do? I'm gonna get back into school, keep when? my job. Yeah, right. Well, stop, well, start, stop wanting and start doing. Well, I got him out of my life for right now. No, I'm... no, you, you say that, and then you say you still have feelings for him, you jerk. Well, you have to. Everybody has to have feelings for me that you were with. And no, a you don't. You don't. He's a drug addict. You had to kick out of your life. You had to get a restraining order. Yeah. You do not have to have feelings for a person like that. You don't. Well, and that's why I'm not going to talk to him. And being friends, I just, you know, was wondering just because there's a child. Your a relationship with him is ruining your life. Children. You were going to ASU. You were going yeah. to school. You had a direction in your life. You let yourself get dragged down by a loser. Right. Well, and you're and still... I made the decision to have a child and now and, I'm by myself. Which was also stupid. And now oh, you can... Then. Yeah, and now you, now you continue to be dragged down by this loser. Right. All right. So there's no need to be friends with anybody or talk to them or anything? No. Okay. Well, I really like listening to your show, and I agree with everything you say. But I, it's funny because I am, you know, this stereotypical, you know, single female, young, no college education with a child. And that's everything that I was against. So now here I am. Yeah, well, you know, you should have stood for your principles. Yeah. But you didn't. I know. I thought about doing it. So what? Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I got my answer. Yes, you did. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Mike, love the show, Dad. Thank you, son. Um, got a great reason you should not be involved with your ex girlfriend. What would that be? Uh, I had a girl that I dated. Stupid. This was before I listened to your show, but uh, dated her for three years. Got out of the relationship and uh, was still having sex with her and whatever. And um, got involved with another girl, not really involved, but just kind of seeing her. They ended up meeting each other at my new apartment and getting in a fist fight. 
and ruining everything with the new girl, everything with the old chick. It's, it well, Mike, part happened. of your problem here at 19 is that you continue to have one girlfriend after another. Yeah, I know that, and that's I'm working on that now. No, no, it, it doesn't require any work. True. Saying you're working on it means you're not doing anything. Oh no, I'm I'm single and mingling now. I mean, no yeah, but not until you meet another girlfriend. Mm, I really don't want another girlfriend. I was with that girl. Another way, when you say I don't want another girlfriend, your language tells me everything uh, I need to know. You say you don't want one, you're leaving it open that you'll have one anyway. Well, she insisted, and so I mean, you, you what you the, your language should be. There will not be any more girlfriends. Well, there will not be any more girlfriends. Well, that's not what you said. You don't want another girlfriend. So the next time a woman says, I want to be your girlfriend, you'll say, well, I don't want a girlfriend. Well, if you're not my boyfriend, then I don't want to have sex with you. Then you'll break down. You'll say, well, I didn't want to be your girlfriend, but I didn't want to be your boyfriend, but she insisted. Well, I say, uh, too bad. I'm out of here. Yeah, I don't believe that for one second. Oh, Tom. I don't it believe it. You got to believe me, Dad. No, son. You already screwed up twice before. That is true. I have screwed up, and the thing is, is I learned from my mistakes. Well, didn't I tell you not to do that? You were listening then, weren't you? I was not. I started listening to you about six months ago. And when was the second girlfriend? Um, that ended not too long before I started listening to you. <laughs> I got a new job, worked outside, and could listen to the radio, and found you and it's been well, it's been a lot different ever since that's for sure well mike thank you for that appreciate the call 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number shelly on the tom like a show hello hi i wanted to say that i completely agree with you about staying friends with exes because of something that happened to me um i was dating a guy five years ago we had a lot of mutual friends and after I broke up with him because he was a total loser, after we had a pretty intense relationship for just a few months, um, pretty much I lost all my friends because um, they didn't like that I broke up with him. But then I tried to stay friends with him, and it got even worse. He would send me flowers, call me all the time, you know, just because I was trying to stay friends. Then when we finally stopped being friends, now he just sends me, uh, five years later, I'm still getting harassing emails when he knows I'm going to be somewhere. He's like, I'm going to be there, too. You better watch out. It's ridiculous. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So he's a total psycho. He supposed to, supposedly has a new girlfriend. But why five years later is he still harassing me? And we only dated for three months. Well, I guess because you occasionally pick up the phone and talk to him. How do you know he has a new girlfriend? Well, no, 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 I don't talk to him, but I have to admit that uh, everybody, you know, has MySpace and stuff like that. So that's how I found out, because when I get an email from him, I go and check what is going on with him. Why do you Why do you even read his email or pay any attention to it? Well, now I've blocked his email, so I can't get them anymore, because I've sort of forgotten about him after a while, and then I get these emails once in a while. So last time I got one a few weeks ago, I blocked him. So I won't get any more. But how many have you gotten? A lot. Uh, every few months. I right, and you mine. keep reading them and you keep going to his MySpace page. Well, I'm not going to do that anymore now that he won't be writing me because I don't think about him unless he's bothering me. He couldn't bother you if you had blocked him in the first place. Well, I was kind of stupid about how to block people, so I finally figured it out. <laughs> yeah. All right, Shelly. <laughs> But, yeah, so it was stupid of me to even date the guy in the first place. <laughs> well, it was. He must have had something going for him. A 14-inch personality, probably. Tony, hello. Hi. Hi. How are you, Tom? I'm great. <laughs> Good to hear. Um, I just wanted to add that I think it's not for everybody to be friends with exes, but for me, it's been an okay circumstance. I haven't had any problems, and... Seven years. Well, why do you or, need it? Well, I don't think you need it, but I mean, I'm not going to just not talk to somebody. Uh, I'm not saying I talk to ex-boyfriends from the past every day, but um, on occasion, you know, they'll send an email or a call or whatever. Um, not too big on the text messaging, so I don't ever get those. But 
I get a phone call or an email every once in a while just checking in to see how I am. and I you, like know, you know what that is. They're checking in to see if you have a new relationship or if it's working out. And see if they can get back in. No, that's exactly what they want, dear. That's how men think. These guys don't just want to stay friends. They want to have the inside track. The Tom Likas Show.